All right, I want to start the debate simply. Does America have a gun problem? Does anybody here disagree with that? America What's has problem? a gun problem. What's the gun problem? The gun problem is too many people are dying from gun-inflicted injuries. So you see, the, it's gun deaths. You see the problem. What's the biggest problem? Um, the intensity of the weapons. I mean, the, the magnitude of the weapons that we have at our disposal now. Military weapons in people's hands, and civilians. It's a problem. The biggest problem is um, the debate, and there's no easy solution. It's really com complicated. Noel, what do you see as the, as the problem with guns? The problem is, is I don't think we know exactly what the problem is. That I don't necessarily, you know, I can't necessarily say or agree that it is the gun that's the problem right. because knives can also, kitchen right. knives, ropes, anything could really be a weapon if that's what you really chose to have it be. So I'm not sure what the underlying cause of that is, and that's what I think needs to be addressed. So what's one thing you you wish we could, you wish we would try when it comes to guns, and you don't understand why we have it. Um, I'm, I'm inclined to think it would be worthwhile to stipulate that all exchanges of firearms have to go through licensed dealers, mm -hmm. and they are responsible to do the background checks and make sure that I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. If we're not using laws on the books and, and, and some things are falling through the cracks that way, new legislation isn't going to fix that. Betsy, what's something you wish we have? You wish governments would have tried, or have tried, or you would like to see us try? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a big issue out on the table, which is that I think that we should regulate semi-automatic, high-velocity rifles in the same way that we regulate automatic rifles. I think that that would have stemmed a lot of loss of life. Let me ask you this: with the Second Amendment, because I think this is also right, is in the in the dispute that that overturned the D.C. gun ban. Essentially, the argument the court made is, is your right to bear arms is absolute, but it can be regulated. There can be some regulation. And I think that that's where we're starting. So I, I don't know if a, if a ban can constitutionally hold up. I, I think the issue is... An AR-15 ban. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm going to... And for the... But, that's something that, that we haven't tested that I promise. I think the issue with the, the Second Amendment is what kind of weapons they were talking about. Military weapons? Um, I know some people believe that uh, it's important for ordinary citizens to have whatever weapons the government has because the government may come to get us someday and we want to be able to defend ourselves. So I can see a little bit of a logic to that, but I don't really agree with it. Let me ask this. Someone may, why shouldn't there be different, does anybody think there should be different um, rules for purchasing different weapons, right? Which means, it, it, how would you feel, Noel, if it was harder for the average person to buy an AR-15, but they could still buy one, but the background check were longer or something like that? Is that, when does that infringe, do you believe it is infringe upon the, upon the Second Amendment? Honestly, this is where I get stuck every single time. Mm -hmm. So the Second Amendment, of course, the right um, to have a militia um, for the purpose of promoting a free society. But then it follows thereafter with the, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. It's not the government. to argue over the comma, right? Yeah, it, it's <laughs> not saying that the government shall provide the right to bear arms. Right. It's a right that's um, predating the Constitution itself and saying that it shall not be infringed for these purposes. Right. Um, so if we're going to just discuss from a constitutional angle, I have trouble finding where the regulation lies as to why the government can have some, other people can't have them. You know, that, that seems to be kind well, of... Well, we've calendar. decided, obviously, that some things we well, are yeah, going to keep, right? No you machine know. guns. <laughs> you know, I... You know, we're not going to allow people to have rocket-propelled... <laughs> Um, shoulder harness, you know. Mm -hmm. We have drawn the line somewhere, but we, where you're struggling yeah. is, is, is whether you that, make it closer. Where's that line? And mm -hmm. um, if we're just going to be speaking, you know, not even practically, if we're just going to be mm -hmm. speaking constitutionally, where, where is that line? Where do you see the line, Hans? I don't have a clear idea of where the line ought to be. I think that ordinary citizens ought not have the right to have nuclear weapons or F-35s or M1 Abrams, one, you know, Abrams tanks and the like. Sure. 
And, you know, if someone is saying, well, citizens ought to be able to rise up against an oppressive government, an AR-15 isn't going to cut the mustard, buddy. You know, you need some serious firepower if you're going to overthrow your government. So we ended up drawing a line, which strikes me as kind of arbitrary. Let's talk about the AR-15, because that's it. when we say it, it's, that's what it is. Someone make the case for owning an AR-15 for me. Now, and I don't mean it like I'm not trying, but, but like why? Um, maybe you have a friend that has one. What, what, why, why should that be for sale to anybody in the public? What, what, what's the case for it? Well, uh, generally speaking, I mean, an AR-15 is, is a semi-automatic rifle, mm -hmm. and mechanically, I mean, it's no different than a hunting rifle. It, I mean, it's, they're both semi-automatic. I mean, we could certainly talk about magazine sizes or the velocity of the, the ammunition that's used, but an AR-15 by itself, and I, I own, you know, a, uh, an AR-15 lookalike, but it's a 22. Mm -hmm. You know, so, it, I mean, that's not the type of gun we're talking about here. But mechanically, it, it's the same same sort of thing. You pull the trigger, you get one bullet. Do you think the AR-15 gets a bad name? Yeah, yeah. I think we tend to lump in lump in too many things under that one that heading uh, as an assault weapon, and it's really it's it's just a semi-automatic rifle. And I, and I would challenge that. I don't think that it's just a semi-automatic rifle. I think that hunting rifles are designed differently. They're designed to shoot bullets actually at higher velocity over a farther distance with the goal of, of a single shot traveling a long distance to kill an animal. Um, an AR-15 is designed to kill people. It's designed to inflict um, maximum damage um, at a much closer range and to, to fire bullets in, in rapid succession. Uh, and, and I do think that they're different in purpose um, and, and in construction. But I guess I would just say an AR-15 doesn't fire, you know, one that I could buy doesn't fire any faster than a semi-automatic rifle, hunt, or a, you know, hunting rifle. Well, I, what I think about those rifles is that AR-15s have higher magazine clip capacities, and so you can shoot a whole uh, range of bullets before you need to reload, whereas a hunting rifle tends to have a different, um, a different action, pump action or something like that, that, that doesn't let you fire that number of bullets in such rapid succession. One thing about the mental health, um, the types of mental health uh, issues that make you prone to kill people are extremely rare. Uh, excluding people, you know, because they have depression. I, I, I suffer from depression. That's not, you know, most people with mental health issues are far more likely to be a victim of crime than to be a perpetrator. I feel like that we've shown why it's politically been so hard. I think that you see that this is, that part's intractable. What I don't think's intractable are two things that you all have touched on. One is figuring out how to make it harder for a mentally ill person to get a gun. I think everybody agrees that's got to be stopped. This intervention with young youth, I mean, the school shooting thing, I mean, how many more clues do we need to have? It's always a young male who's got some trouble. So we have a mental health particularly, and I think we ought to look at And the other is finding a way to educate. So let's try, if the whole goal here is to find a solution. So what are some solutions? Just but I think we all can agree, if somebody that decides to go and shoot up a, more than one person is probably mentally unstable. Do we know any mentally stable people that do that that aren't in the military? I mean, like, that's always what I get at. Like, by definition, if you've made the decision to murder somebody in cold blood, yeah, and how do we catch you've that? snapped. How do we notice that? And that's, that? yeah. Sure. I, you know, and I think that one thing that we don't know a lot about are, you know, the underlying causes, you know, of these shootings. I think that there's not a lot of research that's been done looking at gun violence as a public health epidemic. And I think... This new bill is supposed to open the door for more research. And, and I think that that's absolutely critical because it is a public health epidemic. And I'm not just talking about school shootings. I'm talking about the suicides. And I'm talking about the neighborhood shootings. And the more that we know about that, the more research that's done, the better we will be able to target our solutions. I, we have enough research. I mean, the problem is, and I'm going to cross the line of race here for a minute. When white kids are killing each other, it's a problem. And all of a sudden, it becomes a national epidemic and a national issue that we need to spend $100 million in Wisconsin on for safety and security in schools. But when black kids are shooting each other in poor neighborhoods because 
they don't have jobs, don't have the, don't even have the optim, don't even have the idea of a job in the future for themselves because everything's boarded up, things have moved away, businesses are shut down, mom and dad aren't together, mom and dad have struggles getting work, the educational systems that we send our children to are bankrupt or with very few resources, they don't provide the inspiration that children should get in their education. Honestly, I think we can all agree that there definitely needs to be more research as to the underlying reason as to why. Why this is happening in the first place, because we all can see that it is clearly a problem, whether it's the school shooting or individuals. Um, and I think we think it, it, it's some sort of, you know, it, it, maybe a little stronger mm -hmm. than just saying I think we all think, but mm -hmm. mental health is a concern with it, but mm -hmm. the root cause, I don't know. Um, yeah, may, maybe more research, maybe some restrictions, whether it be mm -hmm. the, the bullet count that's not necessarily regulating the gun itself. But um, regulating magazines. Magazines, mm -hmm. or, or the bullet amount, or, or something like that, or, or maybe... The, or the, um, yeah. the intensity of the... Yeah, mm -hmm. that maybe there's something like that, maybe that makes sense. I'm not an expert, I, I'm not a gun mm -hmm. mechanic, so... Yeah, you're a citizen. <laughs> yeah. No, so. that's right, everybody here is an expert because you're a citizen. Davi, what if... Uh, what have you learned here that's possible, and what do you see as impossible? Well, I, I've got three things. Uh, the first is close the gun show loophole. You know, make it a little harder for people to get uh, these kinds of weapons. Um, crack down, uh, you know, better background checks, especially for uh, semi-automatic weapons. Uh, and the third one I would say is in terms of mental health, I, I think we need to focus on uh, reaching people who are isolated and, and taking care of each other, you know, keeping an eye on the people who are uh, maybe uh, dangerous or having a really hard time and, and try to get them help before it's too late. Scott, what you take away? Would you advocate more money to the ATF, more resources to ATF so they could do this? Sure. But they always say resources is an issue sure. with making the background, because the argument will be made, hey, there is a lot can be done with the background check system. We just don't have the resources. That's yeah. what ATF. Hans, would you, what's possible, what's impossible? I'm going to build on Scott's culture comment. Mm -hmm. I think, generally speaking, a lot of our problems in this country come down to the fact that we're more concerned about our rights and entitlements than our obligations to one another, to know our neighbors, to pay attention to those troubled kids. Uh, Nobody's going to come, you know, the federal government can't come over the helicopter and solve all this stuff. It's, it's just a, it's like knitting. There's just a lot of little things that need to be knit together. And that's not to, I'm not going to discount some of the regulations, background checks, the, the better statistics. But meanwhile, there are over 300 million of us out here. And there's an awful lot we could do in our daily lives. And a lot of it, it comes down to getting to know our neighbors and paying attention to what's going on around us. And we might be the one that, spot that spots that kid that's mm -hmm. falling through the cracks. His mom and dad aren't there taking care of him for whatever reason. And the, maybe gets hazed at school or whatever. And we say, here's a soul. This is a human soul. 
and that soul needs me. Patricia? I agree that the biggest problem facing our country right now is apathy. You know, we'll talk about it when it's in the news, and then we go about our lives. So we really have to kind of have a change of heart and actually want to look for solutions. And where I see we are right now, the other thing we really need to do is research. You know, what is actually going to make a difference versus what sounds good on paper? You know, that's what we need, and we'll need money for it. But that's where we have to start, research. Colleen, what did you take away? Uh, a few things. One, I think we'll, we'll produce a lot of research that will sit on the shelves and take forever to implement. Um, I think that the greatest chance is probably a stronger background check. Um, it's also confirmed for me that our children are their best lobbyists, that adults aren't good lobbyists for children today. Um, but I do think that the opportunity exists. I mean, we've got to be bold. Um, I would love to see a tax, just like we tax cigarettes. I would love to see a special tax, a big surcharge put on weapons, and that those resources be used to invest in a healthy, productive, and responsible society, healthy mental health issues, wellness issues, productive education, workforce development, workforce training. You know, I would love to see these companies that are making money hand over fist, pay something into society that makes the society better, and I think there's an opportunity to do that. But I hope our kids take up that mission. I come away with this thinking um, having a productive and civil discussion is possible. Um, and I think having discussions like this rather than meme battles over Facebook or pick your social media platform, it's really productive um, because I think it helps depoliticize the issue. Well, look, Wisconsin is, um, I always like being here because it's sort of the, in many ways, you know, the what, founding of the Republican Party, founding of the progressive movement. It's all right here in Wisconsin, although they, some Republicans argue that it wasn't necessarily in, in Wisconsin. But there's something about the citizenry of Wisconsin that makes you guys not want to yell at each other. So I really appreciate that. You make <laughs> nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.